What's up everybody, it's Robin Gaming here. So I am one of the uh, 10 million people or something around that, that number uh, who bought a Nintendo Wii U. As you can see, it's kind of covered in dust. I've not really been using it anymore at all uh, recently, I gotta be honest about that. And uh, yeah, we all know that the thing was just not really a success, right? It, it's pretty much one of the least successful consoles of the last, yeah, I don't know how long, maybe even of all time pretty much. And Nintendo just has a lot to live up to with the Nintendo Switch, of course, coming out in March. now. They're going to be having this press conference or this Nintendo Direct, whatever it will be, uh, very soon. I think it's pretty much tomorrow morning for me, um, in which they're going to review a lot of new things. And although I've not exactly been very positive about the Nintendo Switch so far with the reveal they had and stuff like that, I'll also be very honest about that, I do think that Nintendo is able to, you know, kind of like come back from that failure that the Wii U was and actually make the Nintendo Switch a success. But they have to, you know, just do a couple of things very right for that to happen. Happen. And that's what I wanted to talk about in this video. I wanted to give you five ways in which Nintendo can somewhat reclaim the throne. I don't think they will ever really reclaim the throne as in, you know, I'll do the PlayStation 4 or something like that, or simply I'll do PlayStation right now. Um, maybe they can they can outdo the Xbox, but I don't really know about that. It's just like, I've just not been very positive about Nintendo recently. They haven't made the right choice at all, so it's not like I put a lot of faith in them that they will do that. But at the same time, Nintendo has so many good things going for them. They have these franchises people care about. They have the legacy. They have everything to make the thing a success. So I do think it's possible. Whether they're going to do that or not, we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, let's get into my list of the five ways in which Nintendo can really make a comeback with the Nintendo Switch. Uh, the very first reason, very obvious one at the same time as well, exclusive games. I don't need to say much more than that. It's what Nintendo has been known for. Now, I don't think that with great exclusive games they can actually sell 100 million Nintendo Switches. No way, because we've seen with the Wii U, the reason why you bought that console was 40 exclusives, and look what happened, 10 to 15 million people bought that thing. So it's just to get the first good, kind of like to get to get it established, you know what I mean? To get the real hardcore fan base to buy a console, you need those exclusives, especially in the first year or so. So they just need to come out with like a new 3D Mario, a 2D Mario maybe even. Zelda is coming out in the first three months, whether that's going to be yeah, like I said, three months later or at launch, the rooms are kind of different about that. We'll get that confirmed very soon, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see. But I think that's still a good thing. You know, people really want Zelda, of course. What are they going to do with Smash Brothers? What are they going to do with Mario Kart? Games that came out on the Wii U, where uh, are they going to make, you know, new versions for the Nintendo Switch? Or are they simply going to port them over or something like that? I do think you need those games because people love them. Um... And there are other big franchises like Metroid, which we haven't heard of in a long time, you know. Nintendo just needs to start making new versions that at the same time do something differently, that go in a direction that people would really want. Big, big versions of these franchises that people love. It's that simple. I think that in the first year at least, they just need to have, you know, four or five of those big exclusives coming out because that's simply how you're going to get your hardcore audience to buy your console immediately. Um, then the second, the second way is obviously third-party support. We've been talking about this so many times as well. Uh, Nintendo had a habit, especially with the Wii U in the first year of saying like, yeah, we have the third party support and they got the ports for what? For Assassin's Creed and maybe for Call of Duty in the first year as well. I'm not exactly sure about that. Uh, and they're, they're kind of doing the same thing now already by showing you Skyrim and stuff, but it needs to it needs to not stop there. It needs to keep going. I don't think you can really sell a console that, that is, you know, really sold as a secondary console. No, your console needs to be something that people can buy and that's all they'll need. Just like how the PlayStation can be that for certain gamers, the Xbox can be that, a PC can be that, the Nintendo Switch needs to be that too. It needs to have those third-party games that people care for. And so I do think, you know, it's it's needed that Call of Duty comes out for it, that Assassin's Creed comes out for it, that all these games that people play right now will come out for the Nintendo Switch. Even if you look at the PlayStation and the Xbox, you know, whether, although they have great exclusives and stuff that people are playing, the games people play the most are the third-party games always. So that's what Nintendo Switch definitely needs to uh, and they need to make sure that, you know, they're not being dropped again after just six months. I can already see it happening where they're gonna say now, yes, we have the third party support and the Nintendo fanboys out there will be saying that about it as well. Like, oh yeah, it's finally gonna make the comeback in that way. But then after six months or a year, it's completely dropped and companies don't care anymore about that console. So that's my, uh, you know, the second, uh, the second point, I guess. So, um... 
My number three is Nintendo needs to drop the 3DS. And I'm not saying that because I don't like the 3DS or something. Like, you know, it's a great handheld that has sold very well and that people really like. But uh, I think if you're doing this console slash handheld hybrid, you need to drop that other system so that all your games and the audience that comes from the 3DS will be coming over to the Switch as well. Uh, you know, think about a certain other game, Pokemon. I mean, that game is so su successful and they've never made a good console version for that game. That still goes beyond me. Like, where the hell is that 3D open world Pokemon game that's going to be absolutely amazing? If there's one type of open world game I think that would do really well, it's Pokemon. And so, uh, I just can't believe they haven't done that yet. They would get so many people to freaking buy that thing if they just made an open world 3D Pokemon game for that console. I can't believe they just haven't done that. So, uh, yeah, definitely, you know, drop the 3DS, make that entire audience want to come over to the Switch, put your games out only on that platform, um... You know, and yeah, that way you're pretty much forcing people to, to jump over and to, to have it be a success, you know what I mean? So, that's my number three. Uh, number four, very simple, focus on the gamers. And what I mean by that is there's a couple of things Nintendo has been doing so wrong over these last few years. The Nintendo Wii U uh, UI, the user interface, is super slow. I can't believe it. You try to go to your settings and it takes literally 15 seconds to load that menu. It's insane. Uh, there is nothing like trophies or achievements on the Wii U. They need that because gamers wanted. Gamers like that type of stuff. Um, and so, you know, like I said, just... I don't see how not having achievements or trophies is a bad thing. It's an option. If people like collecting that, that's great for them because they can now actually do it. So, some people will always tell me that, you know, Nintendo doesn't need that, but I'm like, well, why not? Having options is great. Uh, some games on the Wii U do not support headsets because Nintendo really likes being super overprotective. Like Mario Kart, you cannot be in a public lo lobby and talk to people. You you can't even normally chat. You have to literally use certain chat commands that are that are pre-written pretty much. So you can't even say your own message to another player, which is just absolutely crazy. So they need to drop that and really you know make the system a lot more open and let people free and what they want to do on it. Uh, you know, and also maybe drop stuff like the Mies or this kind of more childish stuff to it. I get it, they want to appeal to the kids and some people like that about Nintendo so much that they're very user-friendly in that way, but some of it is just a little cringeworthy to me, like the Miis are. I don't know why that system is even in there, so uh, I just think in general focus more on the hardcore gamer. In the end, you know, the hardcore gamer is really who's going to buy this system, especially in the beginning, so focus on those for sure. Uh, and then the fifth way to not make the Wii, oh sorry, the Nintendo Switch fail, but actually have it be a success, uh, the price is obviously important, and while I don't think that you know, it needs to necessarily be super cheap or something. If it's if it can be $250 would be great. I mean, in the end, it is a 720p tablet that you're getting that you can pretty much hook up to the PC. It shouldn't be very, uh, uh, you know, uh, expensive to make, I guess. So just... I hope they can make it really like, you know, they can release it for $250, go under the PS4 and the Xbox One because those consoles are still going to most likely be more powerful, especially the PS4 Pro and the Scorpio, so, you know, like, the price is important in this thing as well, and it can only drop afterwards, of course. I think it could be good to maybe have a, you know, cheap version release for $250 and then a more expensive version for $300 that's maybe going to have a bigger hard drive and stuff, but give people the options there and try to at least have your base model uh, be the cheapest it absolutely can be, and I think $250 would be just the best prize there. So these are the five ways in which I believe Nintendo can make the Switch still a success. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna have to wait and see. I don't necessarily believe they will do all of this. If they can do like at least three out of these five points, I think it can still be a successful console. But yeah, we're just gonna have to wait and see. It's Nintendo after all. They're very unpredictable. I haven't exactly been positive about them recently, even though, you know, back in the days, the Super Nintendo my go-to console as a kid, like, I love, I have some massive, insane good memories with that, uh, with that console playing Super Mario World and stuff, and also, I even liked my Nintendo DS back in the days when I was still a kid, pretty much, um, but yeah, they just need to do a couple of things right to, I think, just reclaim, uh, reclaim their success and reclaim the hardcore gamer in that way, so, with that being said, uh, thanks a lot for watching, make sure to let me know your list of the things Nintendo needs to do right for the Switch to be a success, and then, uh, yeah, for now, like I said, thanks a lot for watching, and hope to see you again next time.